For centuries, foreign lands have cast their jealous eyes at England, this island that we call home, and many have tried to capture it by force, most ending in failure. There have been a couple of exceptions. The Romans successfully took control of Britannia in 43 AD and stayed for nearly 400 years. Then, after the Romans' departure, Anglo-Saxon rule took place, and indeed that settlement of Britannia became known as Engelland, which took a vast area of Britain. And amongst other things, we still swear in Anglo-Saxon language, and our trading and taxation system stemmed from them too. Although there were several other invasion attempts, mainly from Scandinavia, much of England was left to its own devices. Until... In January 1066, Edward the Confessor, King of England, died, leaving no natural successor to the throne. And on the same day as his funeral, Harold Godwinson was crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England. That same day, Halley's Comet was seen and recorded within the Bayeux Tapestry's account of Harold's coronation. In seeing such a bright star, everyone who witnessed it believed it was a bad omen and a strong warning of danger yet to come. Across the sea in Europe, Duke William of Normandy was livid at hearing the news from England, for he had been promised the throne of England after Edward, only two years earlier by Harold Godwinson himself, when he had visited William in Normandy. William immediately set about preparing his army and building 700 ships in readiness to invade England. In fact, there were others apart from William who believed that the English throne belonged to them. Harold assembled his army on the Isle of Wight and waited for William to launch his attack, but had to quickly march north to Yorkshire to quell an invasion attempt by Harold Hardrada of Norway and defeated him at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Before King Harold could barely rejoice at winning, news came in that on the 28th of September, William and his army had landed here in Sussex, now known as Norman's Bay. Harold quickly marched his victorious but now very tired army south and met the Normans here on Saniac Hill, just outside of Hastings, on the 14th of October. King Harold only has foot soldiers, but the Normans are made of infantrymen, archers and cavalrymen. Still expecting English reinforcements to arrive, Harold orders his men to make a human wall shield and to hold it steady at all cost. William's men advance up the hill to face the English. The fighting is fierce, but with the advantage of the slope and the mass behind a wall of shields, Harold's men resist every attack. After several hours of fighting, many of the Norman soldiers retreat back down the hill and are chased by some of Harold's men. All the time, Harold is commanding, hold the wall, hold the wall. Encouraged by Duke William himself, the Normans turn and attack the chasing English. Those who have been separated from the human wall are surrounded and killed. More advances are made by the Normans on the English war. It is now clear that the English are not going to be easy to defeat. But then William has an idea and orders some of his men to pretend to retreat back down the hill again. Despite Harold still commanding the human war to hold strong, many of the English see the Normans retreating and believe the battle is won 
and so give chase. As a final attempt, William again counterattacks the now weakened English wall, and the Normans break through and slaughter all those who stand against them. Those English who can escape flee the field, chased by the victorious Normans. In one day, a kingdom has been lost and won. That battle lasted all day. Harold, the last English king, is killed, and his soldiers are massacred and left naked, stripped of their armour, as illustrated again on the Bayer Tapestry. On Christmas Day, William of Normandy became the third English king of that year, 1066, and was crowned at Westminster Abbey. He had taken over a land of one and a half million souls with a mere seven and a half thousand soldiers and had conquered what the Romans, Saxons and the Vikings had had to fight long and hard for a piece of. He truly deserved his name, William the Conqueror. England was the richest and most cultured in Europe. Christianity was established and the people had developed a God-fearing mentality. The country was admired throughout Europe as a model of how it should be. William understood this well. It was in his interest to maintain it as a viable going concern. At least, this was his plan at the start. One of the first major things William did was to build an abbey on the ground where the Battle of 1066 had taken place, and he even ordered the altar to be built on the exact place where Harold had died. Before the invasion, the town, now called Battle, naturally did not exist, and only became a settlement once the abbey was built. Nobody knows where Harold's body was laid to rest. After the battle, Harold could not be recognised by his face and had been stripped of any badges of honour and only known by his body markings. Some believe he was buried at sea at the order of William because of the passion Harold had defended his coast with. Some believe he did not even die at all at the battle but had fled and lived his days out in virtual exile near Chichester. As well as the Abbey, William set about building castles to defend his new kingdom, including the Tower of London and this castle close to the battle site at Pevensey in Sussex. William decided to keep the old Anglo-Saxon tax system of Geld and the shires that it was based upon and although England was a wealthy land, it did not contain the high amounts of silver or gold that William had been led to believe before the invasion. So he needed to know where the wealth he had conquered was, and in December 1085, he instructed a massive survey. Everything was listed. Who owned what land? How many acres? And in those days, an acre was a measurement of land that one man and his ox could plough in one day. How much was it worth? How much tax was being paid? How much tax should it pay? And how many oxen? How many slaves? And so much more. It became known as the Book of Judgment, or the Doomsday Book. Everything is mentioned within it. Rents paid in fish, eels, horses, chickens, cheeses, blooms of iron. This farm, Bullock Down Farm, on the top of Beachy Head in Sussex. Now housed at the Public Record Office, 
No other country has such a detailed record of itself going back so far in time. Whatever William may or may not have been responsible for, this tale and so much more of it is so important to us because this small island off the shore of Europe became world history. Its speech became world speech and, perhaps more important of all, its social and economic experience also became that of the rest of the world. Thank you.